Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ibrahim Ali Aliyu. I'm here to continue the second study session on the course titled Analysis for Business Decision 2. Today's topic is transportation model, and the topic is divided into two submodules. We are going to begin by looking at the initial solutions. The initial solutions are basically three. The three initial solutions that we have include the Northwest Corner Rule, the Least Cost Method, and the Vogel Approximation Method. These three initial solutions do give various or varying degrees of optimal results, suboptimal results. Typically, the Northwest Corner Rule gives the least possible results, that is, least desirable results. Then, followed by the least cost method. Then, finally, the Vogel approximation method. Basically speaking, the Vogel approximation method do get us closer to the optimal solution than the first two initial solutions, namely the Northwest Corner Rule and the least cost method. Basically, there are procedures in solving a typical transportation problem. As highlighted on the screen, step number one is to formulate the problem. Step number two is to obtain the initial feasible solution, which is where we are going to stop in this module. Then step number three, we test for the degeneracy is part of what we are still going to do. Step number four, if there is degeneracy, we resolve it by introducing epsilon. And step number five, we test for optimality. That is the second part of our module, which we shall be considering the, the what we call the stepping stone method and the modified distribution method, popularly called MODI. Each of these steps are explained as highlighted on the board. We formulate the problem. We check whether the problem is a balanced or unbalanced transportation model. If it is unbalanced transportation model, we introduce either dummy row or dummy column, whatever required or necessary. Then step number two, we obtain the initial feasible solution, which is what we are going to do. As highlighted on the board, we have the Northwest Corner Rule, the Least Cost Method, and the Vogel Approximation Method. These are the three initial solutions that we shall be looking at in this module. Then step number three, we check for degeneracy, which is also what we are going to do in this module. And degeneracy simply means a situation where the number of shipping routes is less than the number of condition. We call the rims condition, that is to say, row plus column minus one. The number of shipping routes has to be in tandem with that. If not, degeneracy has occurred. And when degeneracy occurs, we resolve degeneracy by introducing what we call fake, fake quantity, titled epsilon into that route in order to make the cell completed. Then step number five, we test for optimality. As I said earlier, this is what we shall be looking at in our next submodule. Now, let's begin the initial solution, the Northwest uh, Corner Rule. As you can see, as the name stipulates, Northwest, looking at what is on the board here, let me illustrate this with a simple Four cardinal points. We have north, south, west, and east. And here is what? Northwest. So if we look at this first table here, what we have, this is north, south, west, and what? East. So our northwest starts from here. And this is where we begin the allocation. And let me explain, my dear student, for you to understand clearly. In the allocation process, we have to ensure that we exhaust both rows and column concomitantly in such a way that we don't violate the quantity constraint, both the demand and supply requirement. What is on the board is the algorithm for solving the Northwest Corner Rule. As can be seen clearly, it is in tandem with what I've been explaining. Furthermore, the example one on the board, on the screen there, has been reproduced on this same board here for emphasis sake. As we can see, we have destination and we have uh, another destination here where there is demand and when there is supply. 
we can see this is a balanced transportation problem. Why? Because the supply column is 40, while the demand column is 40. And what is the requirement of the question? The question simply required us to find the initial solution using Northwest uh, corner rule. Now, the next slide gives us the solution. And we have minimum costs. The next slide gives us the solution. And we have minimum cost of 22,500. My students will be wondering, how do we get at the ne this next slide? So I will, advise, I will advise that let's see how we arrive at the next slide using the board example. What is on this screen, what you can see that is projected, we will resolve it practically to aid your proper understanding. This is Northwest. We start from here. What is the maximum we can put here? Here can size 12, but if we put 12 here, can here size 12? No. The maximum that can come here is 10. So we allocate 10 here. Allocating 10 here, having exhaust here, we have to exhaust the row totals as well. So we allocate 2 to balance here. 10 plus 2, 12. 10, 10. Then we have to balance here. What balances here is what? 8. Are we together, class? 2 plus 8, 10. Then we have to balance here 17. What do we put? What do we add plus 8 that we give us uh, 17, class? If you want exactly what we have on the screen here, to make here 17, I think we are to add about um, this 10. To make here 17, 9. If we put 9 here, this plus this is 17. Then we have to exhaust here as well. What do we put here is what? 1. Then what balance is here? 10. 1 plus, 1 plus 10, 11. Then 10 is what? 10. You can see what we have here is how many shipping routes? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And remember the rim condition. M plus N minus 1. How many rows do we have? 3. How many columns do we have? 4 minus 1. And this gives us what? 7 minus 1, which is what? 6. And you can see the total number of shipping routes is also what? 6. Are we together, class? You can see that the total number of shipping routes is also what? 6. Then let's find the costs that this method generates. The total costs is simply 10 times 500 plus 2 times 750, plus 8 times 800, plus 9 times 400, plus 1 times 500, plus 5 times 100. Then it gives us total cost of what? Based on what we have on the screen is 22,500. This is how we arrived at the solution that you see on the screen projected to you. What are we having there? We are having the initial feasible solution using the Northwest corner route. So you can see how what we have, what is projected, is derived. Now, put this figure at the back of your mind. Let's go to the second initial solution. The second initial solution is the least cost method. How do we solve the least cost method? We simply look at the entire matrix, cost matrix given. Then we start the allocation we start allocating to the cells with the minimal cost. Then we move to the next minimal cost. The algorithm is clear as it is highlighted on the board. Select the smallest transportation cost available in the entire table and allocate supply, allocate the supply and demand. Delete the rows and column which has been exhausted, which we shall do practically on the board. Then again, the smallest cost cell in the existing table allocates. It follows what I've explained earlier. Using the same illustration, this is the solution to the least cost uh, method. And the solution we are having here also seems complex to the student, but let's break it down using least cost method, as I'm going to de 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 demonstrate using the board. If we look critically, which is the least cost among all these costs given? 500, oh, 400 is the least here. 400 is still leading. Oh, 300 is leading now. Then if we look critically, 300 is the least, is the lowest cost in the entire matrix. So we allocate the maximum possible here. 
and the maximum possible that we can allocate here is 10 because here can contain 10 and here can contain more than 10 but here can contain 10 so the maximum here is 10. Having said that technically it means these cells and these cells are cancelled because nothing can enter here they will move to the next list cell list cost cell which is what 400 we allocate another maximum there which is what 10 by implication this cell and this cell are eliminated i would together class if you also look for that critically our next list cost here if we examine i think is 450 but we can put 10 here to size here but 10 can't size here so the maximum that we can allocate here has to be two meaning that nothing can enter this row again this is deleted how many viable cells do we have left we have basically four viable cells one two three four which also is the list cell i think here we have 600 and the maximum we can put here is eight so that two plus eight ten seventeen can contain eight i would together class then it means that this has been eliminated because nothing can come in here. Then finally, if you observe critically, we have two cells left. What is the maximum that can come here because it's 700? If we put 10, 10 can size here, but 10 won't size here. The maximum that can come here is what? One. We are left with just only one cell to balance it, which must be what? Nine. Nine plus one, 10. Then nine plus eight, 17. And if you want to see in line with the rim condition that we've been calculating, if you check the rim condition stipulates the shipping route has to be six. And how many shipping routes do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So in trying to obtain the total cost for this, which ordinarily least cost give better results than Northwest corner rule. This is least cost method. We begin to calculate for the total cost, which is 10 times 300 plus 2 times 450 plus 9 times 800 plus 8 times 600 plus 10 times 400 plus 1 times 700. This will give us the total cost as shown on the board. And if we look critically, what we have on the board is 2650. 20,000, 20,650 naira. It's 2650. So this is the cost given by the least cost method. Let me repeat what we have on the screen projected to you. There is a final solution for the least cost method. How do we arrive at the least cost method? You will discover that we first of all look for the cell with the lowest cost. Then we begin our allocation. We begin to allocate the way it ought to be. Let me take this again for your proper understanding. The lowest cost available to us here in the entire table is 300. So we allocate 10 over the year. I would together class flow by the lowest which is 400 we allocate 10 to, to that cell i would together class which is the next list cost that we are having the next list cost that we are having is 450 so we allocate two over there i would together class then class if you observe we've made a fundamental mistake because what we have here is 550 not not 850 is 550 please it means that the eight allocated here shouldn't be because we have to prioritize 550 ahead of 550 ahead of 600 so it is here we are to allocate how what is the maximum we can allocate the maximum has to be one the maximum has to be what one so that 10 plus 11, 10 plus 1 can be 11. Then this is 2 plus what? 1. Then which one is the next least cost? Is the 600. What is the maximum we can allocate? The maximum here has to be what? 7. So that 2 plus 7, 9 plus 1, 10. 
that changes the entire configuration of the erroneous solutions that we've done. It is even better, student, because you can make this mistake under normal examination condition, then you have to retrace your steps so that you can know how to arrive at a better solution. Then what are we having here? Remember, we are left with these two cells. This is the only cells available because E also is occupied. Nothing can enter here without violating this constraint. So what do we allocate here to make it uh, 17? It has to be 10. So this gives the exact solution with what we have on the screen. Meaning that 10 to 300 is correct. 2 to 450 is correct. 9 to 800 has to be 10 now to 800. Then 7 to 600, not 8. 7 to 600. Then 10 to 400. Then 1 to 550 not 700 then that gives us the minimum cost of 20,650 naira this is how we normally solve the least cost method look in the entire cost matrix pick the lowest least cost allocate the maximum possible the maximum possible here to be allocated to the least cost 300 is 10 so we occupy the cell, we move to the next least cost, which is 400. We allocate 10 to that area again by exhausting the demand while the supply is, up, is, is still available. Then we look round again, which one is the next least cost, which is 550. We allocate one and so on and so forth. And when you multiply the number of commodity transported through that route by the cost implication, we have 20,650. Then finally, among the initial solution is the Vogel approximation method. Even though students do consider this to be the most complex, however, is the simplex. Is the simplest of all. Why? If you can follow the guidance which I'm going to be giving you subsequently. Let's pay attention to the algorithm of solving. Then we operationalize it on the board step by step. The step number one is to calculate the penalty for each row and column. How do we calculate the penalty to the, for each row and column? We look at each row. We look for the smallest number. Then we look for the next smallest, the less number that follows the smallest number. And the dot that gives the penalty cost for that row. We do that for each respective row. Correspondingly, we look at the column wise again. The smallest number subtracted from the next number that follows it. Correspondingly, we have the column penalty. Once we do that, then we select the row or column with the largest penalty. That is the row that we are going to enter and allocate. Now, what we now guide the allocation within the row or within the column is simply the least cost within that. Then we begin to repeat the iterations till we arrive at it. The same example we've been using, our example one, this is the solution using Vogel approximation method. But let's see how we arrive at this solution by using the board. Now, we, there is need for us to move to the, this tableau here. Remember, the first one is the Northwest corner rule. The second one is the least cost method. So there is the need for us to move to this next table using what we call Vogel approximation method. Now, let's begin by calculating our penalty cost. For this row, the smallest number is 400, followed by 500. So 400 minus 500, our penalty cost here is 100. The smallest number is 700, followed by 750, our penalty cost is 50. 700 minus 750 is what? 50. 300 minus what? 400 is 100. Here, 450 minus 550 is what? 100. Then if we look column-wise, if we are to derive our penalty cost column-wise, 500, 750, 300, and what? 450. 300 minus 450, the penalty cost for this row is 50. Similarly, here, the least cost is what? 400. The next is 600. Penalty cost here is 200. The same principles apply. 400 minus 500 is what? 100. If you look at the Row penalty cost, the column penalty cost, the largest penalty cost is 200. So it is from this 
It is this role we are going to enter. And when we enter this role, we allocate to any cell that has the least cost. We have 650, 800, 400, and what? 600. So common sense dictates, according to the algorithm explained earlier, we are to enter the row or column with the largest penalty, which is row 2. Then we allocate to which cell? 400, because we are using the least cost. What is the maximum allocatable here is what? 10. Well, at it, by the time we allocate 10, it means this cost is cancelled, this is cancelled, this is cancelled, as well as this is cancelled. It means nothing can enter here. Do we need to recompute our cost penalty? Yes, because the, next, the least cost now is 450 minus 500 is still what? It's still 50. 600 minus 650 is 50 similar but if you look at this 550 minus 400 so the penalty cost for this is 150 but here the penalty cost remain the same it remain the same it remain the same so looking all through which has the largest penalty cost 150 so we enter row 3 where do we allocate to? We allocate to the one with the least cost, which is what? 3, 1. So we allocate the maximum possible here, which is 10. Allocating 10, it means this, 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 these are gone. Then there is need for us to recompute our penalty cost. This minus this. This is gone. 750 minus 450 should be giving us 300. 800 minus 600 should be giving us 200. 550 minus 7, 750, 700 minus 550 should be giving us 150. These still remain the same. These still remain the same. So which is the largest penalty cost? It should be what? 200. No, it should be 300. Here, this cell, 300. So we allocate to the cell with the least cost. And examining the cost available, just 450 and uh, 750. So the least cost here is 1,4. So we allocate the maximum possible, which is uh, 10. So by allocating 10, it means that here is gone, here is gone, here is gone, because nothing can come in from there. So we don't need to calculate any row or column penalty cost, but because we are only left with one column. So we come to this column. We compute that we begin to allocate based on the least costs, which has the least cost, 700. What is the maximum that can come here? Remember, 10 is here. So the maximum that can come here must be what? 1 to make here 11. Followed, what is the next least cost, which is 700, and 750 and 800? So seven, we settled for 750. What is the maximum that can come here? Remember, here has 10. So the maximum that can come here has to be two. Are we together, class? Has to be two. So we are only left with one cell. What do and what we must what we can allocate here must balance here and should balance here. This is making three. What make it ten? Seven. The question is seven plus ten. Does it balance here? Yes. Then also we check for our rim condition as we have always been checking. How many number of shipping routes do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. So there is no degeneracy. Then we compute the total cost. The total cost will be 2 times 750 plus 10 times 450 plus 7 times 800 plus 10 times 400 plus 10 times 400 plus 1 times 700. And based on these, if you can manipulate everything, I think we should be having 20,500 Naira. If you compare the three results critically, you realize that the Northwest Corner will give 22,500. When we use least cost method, we have 20,650. Least cost helps to reduce the cost from 22,500 to 20,600. Then when we use VAM, 
it reduced the cost further to 20,500. From 20,650 to 20,000, what? 500. So you see, the more we move from northwest to least cost, the lesser the cost. We move to VAM, the better the cost. Now, the question is, in our next session, when we'll be dealing with optimal solution, we normally begin from Northwest Corner Rule and begin to improve. But if you are a smart student, you can compute your VAM and begin improvement from there. That gets you closer to the optimal solution. Now, let's cap it all so that we can round off all we've done. Let's cap it up. The initial solution of, of, as obtained the three method must satisfy the following condition. One, it must be feasible. The demand and supply constraint must be satisfied, known as the rims condition. The number of allocation, which is n, must be equal to m plus small n minus 1, where the number of rows and numbers of columns represent both m and n respectively. Now, so far so good, we've been able to explain the concept of transportation model, and we've seen the application of transportation model to the initial solution. Before, before we move into our next class, because in our next class we shall be considering the three optimal solutions. And what are the two optimal solutions? What are they? The stepping stone method and the modified distribution method. But with the little minutes, with the few minutes left, let me see how I can recap everything. How do we arrive at the Northwest Corner Rule solution? We begin using the four cardinal points. Not south west and east then here is northwest so we begin by allocation by allocating arbitrarily from northwest here that's the rule we allocate the maximum possible what guides my allocation here is 12 here can size 12 here can size 10 but if i put 12 here to violate here so it has to be 10 maximum so that it can satisfy this condition and satisfy this condition this is the principle that guides all the allocate allocation to every respective cell then I have to exhaust this. That's the principle of Northwest Corner Rule. In exhausting this, it is only two that is applicable to balance year 12. Then I have to exhaust year 8 is to balance year 10. Then I have to exhaust year with 9 in order to balance year 17. I have to exhaust year with 1 in order to balance year to be 10. I have to exhaust year with 10 in order to balance year to be 11. Then when we compute the cost, what we have is simple. We simply have the total for the Northwest Corner Rule, which is 22,250. Then we use the second initial solution, which is the not, which is the least cost method. What is the process of the least cost method? We look at the entire matrix. We select the cell with the least possible cost, which is 300. Then we begin the maximum allocation from that cell. You can see 10 has come in. It means nothing can come into this cell respectively. Are we together, class? Then we move. Then we move. So the next list cost, looking critically, our next list cost is 400. But this 400 has been cancelled because 10 has negated all this. 400. Allocate the maximum possible, which is 10, meaning that these and these are gone because I've marked it with the red marker initially. Marking with the black is just for to re-emphasize. Gone. Then we check this and these. 750, 800, 700, 450, 600, 550, which is the least cost, 450. We should allocate the maximum possible. Why can't we put 10 here? Because when we put 10 here, it will size here. However, it won't be able to contain here. So we must put the quantity that can contain, that can satisfy the demand and the supply and the demand constraint. Only two can enter here, balancing a 12. Meaning that this is gone. Nothing can enter here, nothing can enter here, and nothing can enter here. We are only left with four cells. One, two, three, four. Are we together, class? And if you look at it critically, the next list cost here is 550, but the maximum that can enter is 1. The next list cost also is 650. The maximum that can enter here is 7. While the final cost available is 800, then we put the maximum there. Calculating it, we have 20. 20,650. That gives us a better solution that minimizes the objective function, which is cost, than the Northwest Corner Rule. The VAM, as I explained earlier, we calculate the penalty cost for each row and each column. Then, how do we calculate each penalty cost? We look at the lowest cost or the minimum or the lowest or the least cost in each row and look at the next number to hit that is following it. Then we subtract both from each other, we get the penalty cost. For instance, if you look at the least, if you look at the least cost of this is 300, 
followed by 450. 300 minus 450, that's how we got the 50. And you calculate row wise correspondingly, you calculate column wise responsibly, re, re, responsibly, sorry, respectively, then you begin to allocate from the cell that has the maximum row. So this represents the summary of the entire three initial solution. So in our next class, hopefully, we will now be improving each of these initial solutions using stepping stone and not and what we call modified distribution method. That will give us a solution that is optimal, that can never exceed that optimal solution. However, it is relevant to point out that most of the solution of Vogel approximation method tends to be optimal in some certain problems. But we can't see until we get to the next class. Thank you and God bless. I would like to submit today's lecture in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Thank you.